Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. Also make sure you turn off the dishwasher's water supply underneath the sink. In this video, we're going to show you how to change out the Whirlpool dishwasher motor to sump seal. It's going to be a very easy repair and it should only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. When you open up the package, you're going to get the new motor to sump seal. The motor to sump seal goes in between the main motor and the sump assembly. The main reason you be changing it out is if it's damaged and you're getting water leaking on the floor. In order to get to the part, we have to pull the dishwasher out of the cabinets. First thing we're going to do is go underneath the sink and disconnect the lines. Now that we're underneath the cabinets, you want to make sure that the dishwasher is still unplugged. And you may want to throw a towel down. When we take off the fill line and the drain hose, there's going to be some water that comes out. First, we're going to disconnect the fill line. It's connected right here to the hot water valve. You want to make sure the water valve is off. And then we're going to use our 5 8 inch wrench to loosen up the hose. Once you have it broke free, you can just reach in and unscrew it by hand. Once you have it off, you can just set it down. And then we can take off the drain hose. To take the drain hose off, you just want to follow it up to wherever it goes. It may go to the garbage disposal. Ours goes up to the air gap. Once you locate the end of it, we're going to take a 5 16 nut driver and loosen up the clamp. Once you have the clamp loose, you can pull it free and set it down. Now that we have the lines disconnected, we're going to open up the dishwasher door and take the lower rack out. To get the rack out, all you have to do is pull it out and lift it off the door. Once you have it out, you can set it aside. Now that we have the lower rack out, we can use a Phillips screwdriver to remove the screws that hold the dishwasher to the countertop. Now that we have the screws out, we're going to lift up on the door and carefully use it to start the dishwasher out of the cabinet. Once you have it out a little bit, you can close the door and use the frame to pull it the rest of the way out. You want to make sure you pull it off far enough. We're going to put a towel down so we can lay it on its back. We're going to lay the towel down to protect the floor and catch any water that may come out. Once you have the towel down, we're going to carefully lay the dishwasher down on its back. Now that we have the dishwasher on its back, we have access to the pump and motor assembly. We're going to use our 5 16 nut driver to take out the screws that hold on the counterbalance weight. Once you have both screws out, you can lift the weight out and set it aside. Now that we have the counterweight out of the way, we have to take off the pump assembly. We're going to take the wires out of this clip right here first. Just have to lift up and slide them out. Once we have the wires off, we're going to take off one of the clamps on the hose that goes in between the pump and the sump. If you have the old style clamps that came from the factory, they're crimped on there and you can't take them off. So you're just going to have to pull on the hose and maybe use a screwdriver to help pull it off the sump assembly. And then you have to buy a screw type clamp in order to get the hose back onto the sump. Luckily ours have already been changed, so we're just going to use a quarter inch nut driver to loosen up the clamp. To get the pump free, we're just going to pull towards us a little bit and then pull down. That will release the little tab that locks it in on the top. Once you have it free, you can just set it aside. As you turn it around, you can see the little tab that it mounts on and the little rubber grommet on the sump. Yours came out, just push it back in so it's ready for when we put the pump back in. Once you have the pump out of the way, we can take out the motor to sump seal. It's pushed into the sump right here. We're just going to take a flathead screwdriver and carefully get between the seal and the sump and work it free. You may have to come at it from a couple different angles. Once you have it free, you can pull it off the sump and out of the dishwasher. Here's the old motor to sump seal next to the new one. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can get it at ApplianceFartsPros.com. Looks like they redesigned it, but it'll go in and work just fine. 
Before you push the new seal in, you may want to get it wet. That'll let it slide into the sump a little bit easier. So make sure you push it all the way in so it seats in properly all the way around so you get a good seal. To put the pump in, we're going to lift it back into place. And remember, you want to make sure that this tab goes up into the little mounting grommet. Once you have it in there, you want to carefully lift up on the pump, making sure that the pump goes up into the seal. As you're pushing up on it, you're going to have to push this hose over a little bit to make sure this hose goes on and the tab goes into its little cutout. Same as when you push the seal in, you want to get all these fittings wet to make it easier to slide everything in. Once you're ready, you can lift it up into place. Once you have it seated properly, we can use the quarter inch nut driver to tighten down the hose clamp. Once you have the clamp tightened down, we can put the wires back in the retainer. Just have to grab them and clip them back in there. Once you have the wire secure, we can put the counterweight back on. To put the counterweight back on, all you have to do is line it up and set it in place. Once you have it on, we can use the 5 16 inch nut driver to put the screws in. Now the way the dishwasher put it back together, we can put it back up on its feet. To put the dishwasher back up on its feet, we're just going to carefully lift it up. With the insulation sliding off, make sure you grab that at the same time. Now that we have the dishwasher back on its feet, we can pull the towel out and push it back in the cabinet. Now we have to reach underneath and put the line through the cabinets. We want to push the dishwasher in about halfway. Then we can go underneath the sink and pull on the lines to make sure they're not caught on anything. Then we can push the dishwasher in the rest of the way. Now we can reconnect the drain hose to the air gap. Once you have it pushed up into place, we're going to use our 5 16 inch nut driver to tighten down the clamp. Once you have the drain line hooked up, we can hook up the water line. All you have to do is get it started by hand. Once you have it snug, we can reach in with our 5 8 inch wrench to tighten it down so it doesn't leak. Now that we have the lines reconnected underneath the sink, we can open up the dishwasher door. Once you have the door open, we can put the lower rack back in. To put the lower rack back in, all you have to do is set it on the door and push it back into place. Once you have it all the way in, we can use the Phillips screwdriver to put the screws in that hold the dishwasher to the countertop. Once you have both screws in, you can close the dishwasher door, plug it back in, turn the water back on, and take it for a spin. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.